Well, I think probably the single most interesting development is the increasing uh, importance attached to economic analysis. I think when I started, there was a belief that somehow what constituted a distortion of competition or a restriction of competition was essentially a legal analysis. Uh, I think what has become clearer, and I think one of the most positive developments, has been the willingness of the court to recognise that economic analysis is important, but secondly, that economic analysis is something that courts can deal with in the context of re reviewing what regulators do. Ooh, I think uh, one of my career highlights was uh, having been on the three uh, panels in 2002 that, uh, at the General Court, or the Court of First Instances it then was, which uh, annulled three decisions of the Commission in merger cases. I think they were Tetra Laval, Schneider and the Air Tours cases. Mm -hmm. um, I think the significance was not that we annulled those three cases, but uh, what underlay, I think, all those three decisions was that the Commission uh, needed and subsequently recognised the need to uh, reinforce its economic analysis. And indeed, it was that that led Commissioner Mario Monti, who I believe responded very positively to those cases, uh, to set up uh, a strengthened economic uh, review within uh, DG Comp, uh, to appoint a chief economist, and indeed, even more importantly, perhaps, to move the handling of merger cases back to the specialist divisions associated with each industry or sector. Ooh, in my own career, um, well, I was lucky enough to have been involved in the early 1980s as one of the counsel in the IBM case, which is uh, in many ways a precursor of cases that we're seeing now rerun, albeit in a different uh, uh, technical context, but raising many of the same issues, both in Microsoft, where I was on uh, the two panels in the general court that dealt with this, and now in the Google case, where we're having a similar issue. So I think th those have been, uh, I think I, I feel somehow that my involvement in IBM was a lucky first step uh, to subsequent involvement in these cases where I think it's terribly important that the regulators get the balance right between the need to protect competition but indeed to do so in a way that doesn't stifle uh, technical development. The biggest challenges, well, I think probably the, uh, well, there are two challenges that I would identify. One, I think, is uh, in the context of particularly the financial markets and uh, dealing with issues such as algorithms and how financial markets respond in, in areas where uh, we have automated tra trading and matters of that sort. Uh, which is going to produce a, a new set of challenges which we're only just starting to see the beginning of. And again, I suspect also uh, the, the continuing development of uh, IT uh, which in, and related uh, developments, not just in IT but in uh, biological sciences, where uh, the uh, developments, the scientific developments are coming at such a great pace and the challenge for competition authorities will be to respond in a way that recognises those paces of development. I can't think of a better place to update yourself with what has been happening in the competition law field. And it's not just what's happened in the, in the past year. It's really a, a perfect place to understand uh, in more detail the complex of uh, competition law rules that apply both at EU level, at national level and increasingly internationally. And if you don't go away uh, feeling that you understand a bit better uh, the difficult but important area of competition law with which we all have to deal, then I'd be very surprised.